is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Well, you heard the dwarf. This is Loveline. I sound weird, Mike. Anything up with that, or is that just me? That's just you. You, you, you always sound weird. It's my deviated septum. Right. Oh, man. Once in a while, I go to someone's house, and they hear my voice on the phone machine. I go, who's that retard you're dating? And it's it's me, Drew. Don't ever do that. Drew, how are you? I'm fine. That is Dr. Drew, board-certified physician. Right. Watched Jumanji over the weekend, did right. you? Right. Scared the hell out of my kids. Thank you for warning me. Thank what, you, Adam. What are, it's, it's a Robin Williams movie. It's PG yeah. about a about a circus, uh, you right. know, animals that ran like around. Kids flick. Sounds like a kids movie. I told my brother, my kids, hey, elephant movie. We're gonna watch elephants and rhinoceros. Thanks. Let's go to the calls. All right, let's, get let's right go. To it. All right, wait a minute. I want to give the phone number out. Okay. Don't get so fast there. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one one eight hundred. 568-3191. Let me give the facts out real fast there, hot finger. <laughs> 310-854-4455. It is Loveline. It is Sunday night, and we are moving along, and we're going to talk to Nick. Nick, what's up? Uh, hi, Dr. Drew. Adam. Hey, Nick. Hey. Um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yes, sir. My penis is, like, really screwed up. Uh, instead of being circle, it's flat. And uh, when it's in the erected state, that is... And you know how it sticks down? It sticks up, so it's when it's erected, it faces me. It's supposed to go up when it's erect. It is? I thought it was supposed to, like, go down. It's supposed to go down when it's erect? I don't know. No, there, well, that's a, when it's sad. There's, there's, a tendon, there's a tendon there, the, the ligament, rather, that holds it up. And uh, that's... I mean, it's, like, all the way up. It's, like, facing me. It's well, touching my stomach. All right. Well, that's, yeah, that, that just means... Uh, I mean, doesn't that go away when you're, when you're older, Drew? You're trying to say Here, here's, are you right. telling us a bit of personal history? <laughs> right. Is that what Let you're me getting explain into? something. I've just discovered something. All right, we're like two minutes into the show. I had a revelation. The penis is like a sundial, but it's not. it doesn't go over the course of a day. It goes over the course of a lifetime. When you're 14, 15, it's straight up. It's like high noon. It just gets overcome and then when by you're, gravity. When eventually. you're like 30, it comes straight out at like 3 o'clock, and then by the time it's down at 6 o'clock, you're ready to go. And if it gets to like 9.45 or 10.15, you're in serious trouble, and you won't need it anymore, so it sort of solves itself. So it's all right, it's not a problem. It's not a problem Nick, at 16. It, it, it doesn't have to be perfectly round, and it doesn't have to stick in a particular direction. I mean, you just, you, you guys your age do preoccupy a lot about their it's wait, in fact, wait. In fact, I'm shocked by how many calls we get about this. I'm um, dismayed. Well, I'm Nick. Shocked. Yeah, Nick. Wait, but uh, I have, um, okay, when I, when I pull, pull it down, you know, the inside of my penis, when I touch it, it hurts like hell. I mean, I can't stand it when anything touches it. When you pull it down? Yeah, the inside of it. So that means I'm going to have pain during sex. It does not. What do you mean the inside of it? I mean, the, but I don't know, but it's towards your abdomen, towards your trunk. I guess I don't know the the, the part, the tip part. Well, Nick, there there are there's a, a range of what is normal, and uh, there are syndromes that cause abnormalities of curvature and whatnot. Something called Peyronie's disease. Well, I think it's because I jacked off too much. No, is it going to get better? No, Nick, I, I would relax. I don't think you've got a problem. Okay. <laughs> Believe me, Nick, I'm living proof that masturbating too much has no side effects on the penis. Maybe a little on the mind. All right, let's move ahead. Kimberly, what's going on? Hi there. How are you doing? Good. Hi. I had a question. Actually, a couple questions for Doctor Drew. Mm-hmm. Um. My mother, she was just diagnosed with cervical cancer, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering what exactly that's, what's going on and what can be done if there's, like, any hope, because I'm really, really worried. Yeah, it depends how advanced the cervical cancer is. Do you have any idea? Um, well, it's like, she showed me kind of, like, a little diagram her doctor drew for her. Of the cervix? Um, no, of, like, exactly where she stands, and she's, like, past, she's heading towards abnormal, but she's not, like, too far into it. Well, no, 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 no. So, so it's really not even cervical cancer, right? Well, yeah, that's it's a precancer. I, I think that's what it is. I okay, don't know. She, it's it's, it's, com it's totally curable, Kimberly. It's totally curable, and it's why you should be getting Pap smears every year because yeah. it, it. Well, it, that's the kind of thing that typically and often will show up in many women, and you yeah, if you that, have that if. Was, those it, were the hereditary traits. I well, it's I not like general heart disease and cancer. From well, it's not just even your predisposition for cancer. It's the fact that you're 19. If you're sexually active, if you have herpes or genital warts, your risk of precancerous or cancerous lesions of the cervix are common. It kills young women. That's why you have to go get a Pap smear every year. If if, okay. if they pick it up early, it is totally treatable. If it gets out of out of hand, if it, if it develops and uh, begins to spread, it's always fatal. So okay. What, Thank. What can be done about my mom? She, it's, it, they'll either, they'll, depending where it is, they'll do some kind of biopsy or fr freezing or removal of it, and it'll be over with. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. 
Drew, let me say something. Don't cut those collars off, Adam. Let me deal with it. What, what are you talking about? She was she, done. She was talking. Her mom's sick. She has to tend to her, Drew. What do you want to do? Monopolize her on the phone all night where her mom's screaming in agony right, in the right, bedroom? Right. I'm going to take this over. Go ahead. I wanted to say this. I heard this study about uh, cancer. I don't know if it's cervical cancer or uterine cancer or something like that. And that, that the less partners a woman's been with mm -hmm. and the longer she's held out, meaning meaning women that lost their virginity after 25. And right. God knows I'm from the valley. So I, I don't believe there's one there. But the point is, the point is they have a, they have less chance of getting cervical cancer. Yeah, that is true. So it's like, again, it's one of those weird nature things saying uh, hold out. That's right. I mean, th that is why I think our society has developed these sort of attitudes that they have about sex. I mean, they, they have, there's a biological basis to them. But here's another thing that just came out last week. And that was a study that showed that women that, oh gosh, I'm hoping I get this data right, that having abortion increased the risk of breast cancer. So all these women that are worrying about going on the pill that they might get breast cancer, the reality is they're probably at greater risk if they get pregnant and have an abortion. A higher risk of getting breast cancer than even being on the pill. No, oh, it's one big, sick, confused, jumbled sexual mess, isn't it, Drew? I don't know. All right, well, who do you want to talk to? Uh, let's talk about birth control. Here we go. <clears throat> Laura, you're on Loveline. Yeah, Laura. Um, I was thinking about getting on birth control. On the oral pill? Um, I'm not sure. What are you thinking about? Um, well, Quit playing footsie with me, Adam, for Christ's sake, will you? <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I wanted to know the effectiveness, uh, sorry, effectiveness of um, the condom and birth control pill and which one's better. Well, the birth control pill is definitely much more effective than the condom. Okay. okay. But, yeah. you know, you should be really making a habit of practicing safe sex, so condom would be what yeah. you'd want to use in addition to being on the birth control pill. Well, I'm still a virgin. I'm just I'm thinking about why? it. Why? What's up? Huh? What, why? What's the hurry? What's going on? Well, my boyfriend and I have been together for a while now. Is he really pushing you? Yeah. Are you ready? I think so. You know, I, I hate to hear young people going on ahead with that because they think they're ready. Well, I mean, sexually, you never really know, do you? It's going to be bad. It's going to be painful. It's going to be humiliating. You can rest assured well, of that. Um, that's, that's nice. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm here to tell it how it is. That's but great. you got to get through that one bad one to get to the many, 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 many good ones that will follow. Well, the reason I'm like really thinking about it is because we grinded. And he spewed on me. Like, let me explain to Drew what grinding and spewing is. <laughs> hold still, Drew. Let me come over there. Just hold still, you son of a gun. All right, Laura, what's up? God. We we grinded and he spewed on me. Yeah. And like that like really scared me. Sure. Sure. So, I mean, so you got, the, the point is you're getting close to contact and you're, you're making appropriate plans. You're not denying that it's happening. You're making plans for it. That's good. But just don't do anything you don't really want to do. That, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, so I, what I'm saying, Laura, Laura, this guy's like a Shih Tzu. He's <laughs> grinding and spewing. I mean, that's something that a dog does on the on the, on like the sofa arm. <laughs> huh. Um, I've also heard about a shot. Yep, that's a, a Depo Provera, um, and that shot's fairly effective. Is that as effective as, as effective? Yeah, it is. A lot more side effects. In my experience, a lot of bleeding and things that happen with that. Difficulty with your the irregularities of your period, but it's very effective. Okay. Okay. Bye -bye. Bye. All right, let's go to David. David. Hi, Drew yep. and uh, Adam. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, good. Uh, my question. My question is, 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 I've been dating this guy for about eight months now. Okay, and I've been HIV positive since July twenty seventh, and our sexual. I can't explain it. What do you want to call it? Just my sex drive's gone down. Mm -hmm. And are, are you on any antiviral drugs? No, I'm not. Um, they had me on AZT right. in the beginning, right. and it really messed me up. Mm -hmm. Really bad. I'm also hepatitis B positive, mm. and I want to know what kind of advice I can get from you guys. Well, to... get your get your. What's your partner's status? Is um, it... he's negative. And does he have hepatitis B? No, he doesn't. He Do you... just went in to get tested again and get him um, vac vaccinated, right? Yeah, he just went to get tested to find out if he's negative, if he's yeah, positive. But, but get him, if he's negative, get him vaccinated for hepatitis B. All right. Right. Oh, you can do that. Yes. Now, yes. how how long were you with your partner, David, uh, before your test? Before you realized you're HIV positive? About a month. Mm. Um, I realized that that I was positive. I realized I found out how I, I I got the virus. I was raped on my 23rd birthday by this guy in this bar. Wow. And I'm 24 years old. Wow. So I don't want to die yet. Okay. Uh. And um, 
like I said, our sexual drive has just been down really low, and it's tearing up our relationship. Wow. And I know that I don't want our relationship to depend on sex because it's not all that. But, I mean, it's good <laughs> when we have it, but just the sexual drive has just gone down. I mean, what kind of advice do you, can you give me? Mm. Well, I mean, this is, a, this is a pretty good hurdle to get over sexually. What, how are you guys practicing the safe sex? Uh, I mean, we have used condoms and very oral, very, you know, not anal that much because I'm very scared of the condom breaking. It's broke, been broken already once. Wow. L- let me ask Drew a quick question. It would make sense. Do they have different, you know, do they, like, he, David needs a condom. He needs a super condom. He needs, like, a Kevlar yeah, condom. I mean, he cannot, you know, I hate to, to make light of it, but uh, his condom cannot break. If, right. if my condom breaks, I'm okay. I mean, chance I'm just masturbating, so I'm going to be okay. You know, except for, like, the dry cleaning stuff. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, is David has to have a condom that will not break. That's right. Now, can is there a no. condom that gives up? Why don't they make one that gives up a little sensitivity right. for the, you know, but it's absolutely, like, ironclad, like, made by uh, Michelin or I, something. I don't have an answer to that, but that's a good question. Another one of my inventions. Yes, there you go. Put this that, could, David, yeah. you would buy this, this super condom, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, totally. In yeah. fact, guys that are having trouble that, that they're... Uh, they're Climaxing too quickly might might get that too, or that their penis isn't it doesn't have enough girth on it. Would you I, have? I a, mean, you could make a condom that's actually the walls of it were like seven eighths of an inch thick that would add like a full like like inch and a half to your penis you width. Know, I never realized how much carpentry applied to the human sexual relation. It really does. It, it's amazing. Well, you know, Jesus yeah. was a carpenter. All right, so David, David, I I would say, have you been depressed? Yeah, I, really badly. Right, um, and, I'm seeing a psychiatrist. Okay. I'm on, you know. Uh, Tegretol yeah. and all that. Psych- what else? Medication. What else? What, what else besides Tegretol? Um, I can't pronounce it. It's Triflutadaglin, something like that. Try me again. Huh? Well, what I'm getting at is many of these antidepressants, first of all, depression can drop your sex drive dramatically, and many yeah. antidepressants, particularly the serotonin reuptake inhibitor, inhibitors, Zoloft, yeah. Paxil, Prozac, can really suppress your sex drive. So it's probably more related to that and even possibly related to the HIV because, you know, it can affect the central nervous system also. Yeah. So your partner has really got to support you. They've, he's got to look beyond the, the the physical aspects of this and really get behind you because yeah a, I mean it's really hard on him too hey, uh, look it's going to be tough on him but the the facts are the facts and yeah. he's got to, he's got to get supportive he's got to show some compassion for you yeah and hopefully if you work with a psychiatrist and work with your doctors things will improve all right David all right good Thanks luck lot, good luck David all right I cut I, him off you did yeah fantastic you're a real pro Kathy you're on Loveline hi guys hey hi um having a problem with um, my husband. He was um, a guy who I gave up my virginity to, and sex was very exciting at that time because before, when I was a virgin, I'd always fantasize what sex would be like, and... So, you... you... My problem is, is that when I was excited and curious and having sex with him, I used to go down on him all the time, and it was exciting for me, but now it's, it's not... It's a kind of a turn off, but he it really misses how I used to do that. <laughs> what a what a shock. <laughs> Kathy, yeah, exactly. Kathy, listen. So, you didn't give up your virginity to your husband to your wedding night or No, no, we had sex before that, but 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 still there's one man you were with and it was with your husband. Uh-huh. Oh, I'll tell you, Drew, if if I had a wife who only had sex with me, I would have a windbreaker made up for her. I would work that into every conversation. Hi, this is my wife, Kathy. You know, uh, she never experienced any loving except for mine. Thank you very much. That is amazing. So this guy wants, wants, to, uh, he wants to turn back the hands of time and get you down there. And you don't want to go. Yeah, I'm, I would like to, but sometimes when I'm... All right, him oral what, sex. Kathy, well, I'm going to answer. Wait, now let her answer. You she, can give she's your... confused. Well, when I'm giving him oral sex, sometimes he gets this pre-cum, and it gets really slimy, and it's just it's just disgusting after a while. And... Hey, Adam, see? She's I not got confused. A little, I got... She knows exactly what she's uh, talking all about. All right, Drew. I was going to say that, by the way. I got a little of that working right now, Kathy. And another thing is, when I was a teenager, um, I had a an adopted father who sexually abused me but he ah. didn't he didn't make me have sex with him he punished me by making 
me give him oral sex. Wow. And so sometimes when he says, but, come on, you know, I want Kathy, you to do Kathy, this. All right, Kathy, 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 Kathy. It does not take Freud to figure to figure this one out. I just don't want to be pressured, but I want to make him happy. And when I don't give him oral sex, he gets mad and he doesn't even want to have sex. Wow. I don't see how, after having been through that kind of trauma, you could feel good about doing that act to anyone. Does, does, does he know about the situation with your stepfather? Yeah, and he tries to be compassionate about it, but... While he's pushing I mean, your he head down to his groin? When I used to, you know, when I used to first start having sex with him. All right, here, here's the deal. If he knows what went on with you, the atrocities that uh, your, your stepfather committed with you, he should really be sympathetic to that. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean you've got to be a, a, quite a pig to make a stink over something like this when you realize what went on in the past. Don't you, Drew? Well, do you think it could be partially <laughs> Drew's thinking thought? about no, what it. what I'm thinking is maybe he really doesn't understand the implications. I mean, maybe he's, in, he's either in denial about it or really just doesn't understand how much devastation that kind of an action can cause to a young person. I can, and, separati- I can separate no, the no, two. No, no, Kathy, you can't. You, I, I can separate the fact that I was abused as a teenager, and I can separate making love to my husband. But when I... When he starts pressuring me, like if I don't, that's when it all like comes back, right? Sex. Right, that's when it all comes back. Kathy, you call him from one of those freeway phones, by the way. No, because I've heard you're just like a convoy <laughs> going down your street. That's the third big rig I've heard. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> There goes another one. All right. Well, Kathy, okay. I don't mean to make light of uh, of your uh, living arrangements, but Kathy, listen, you're you're gonna have you got therapy with this whole stepfather situation? Mm, some. I've come to terms with it. Yeah. No, you haven't. If you if you'd come to terms with it, you wouldn't be calling us, don't yeah, you think, Drew? I would. Suspect. I'm glad to hear it was when you were a teenager, not when you were like ten or, or five. What about that? I mean, I would really like to make him happy because I don't want to have another situation when, you know, we're about to have sex and he says, honey, can you go down there? And I I really don't want Kathy, to. I, I don't see how we can tease out uh, the behavior from your past and somehow give you some magic potion or magic chant that's going to allow you to enjoy that and go back to the way it was. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, we could just say, oh, come on, just forget about it. He's not your stepdad, and just get down there. He's your husband, and please him, but you're not doing it, and and it's not going to work emotionally for you. That's not right. That's not the right thing. All right, so you got to get some therapy. you got to straighten this stuff out. You have to deal with the the issue of the stepdad. You have to sort of clean house emotionally a little, and then you're free to blow away. (laughs) I'm so sensitive. You're so poetic. But it's true. It's true. Tiffany. Yes? What's happening? Nothing. What's going on? Okay. Well, when I was younger, like in, I don't know what grade, like fourth grade, mm. well, I, my mom is divorced right now and was divorced at the time. We had gone to L.A. with her boyfriend for a weekend on Martin Luther King Day, and I was, we had a room, and there's my mom and her boyfriend in one bed, and me in, like, a little dinky fold-out couch thingy. Right. And one night I woke up, and they were having sex, and I didn't want to say anything because I was, you know, didn't quite know about it. I knew about it, but not enough to know about it, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was really nervous. I didn't want to say anything. And then a couple years later, when I was, like, in fifth or sixth grade, they, my mom was with another guy who had beat her. But she went back to him because she has horrible taste in men. And <clears throat> they were making weird noises. And I finally got fed up around 4 o'clock. And I went in there. I said, I went and knocked on the door. I said, Mom. And she's like, all of a sudden the noise stopped. What? Can you please be quiet? She says, why? What are we doing? In a really mean voice. And I said, mm-hmm. you guys are having se- sex. And I started bursting out into tears. And she came out and said, that wasn't a nice thing to say, and oh, then wow. yelled at me about oh, that. Oh, what a shame. So your mom's not real considerate, Tiffany. She was just, I don't know, she was with a guy, and he told her to say that. Ugh. And then she, the next day she went and she yelled at me about that, and now I can't stand anyone, you know, I can't stand the thought of her having sex or just anything, like having sex, and I can't stand, like, if anyone kisses, you know, I just... Right. Oh, I can't, I can't stand it. You mean like if you're watching a TV show and you see you see them kissing, you you turn yeah, it off. I, well, I don't. I just kind of like turn away or something. It's like, ugh. Wow. Now, how old are you, Tiffany? Twelve. 
Well, it's probably good that you're disgusted by sex at this age. I'm afraid, though, she's going to turn it around and become overly preoccupied with it. Usually um, does happen, yes. Because when I was in Oregon, now only my best friend knows this, and I hope... Well, anyways, I was with not with a guy, but there's a guy. His, I don't want to say his name, but he lives, I was in Oregon, at, and he taught me how to give a blowjob, how to put on a condom, how to... Um, let's see... How to, uh, what's it called? Masturbate, and we watch porno films together. I'm All like, right, oh, Tiffany, geez. Tiffany, Tiffany, listen. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of time, and you got a ton of problems, but let me say this. You got a lot of, you saw a lot of weird stuff too early. You heard a lot of weird stuff too early, and you were in contact with a lot of weird people too early. It's not your fault. You understand that? Mm-hmm. You you're just acting out on what you've heard and what you've right, seen. Right. Try not to give in to the impulse of trying to master those things which seem so horrible to you before and they preoccupy you now. Try well, actually, I'd like, I can't even think of that now. All right, but try, try to focus on getting close relationships with people if you can. I mean, that's going to be the most important thing for you is being able to be close, be open with someone. And then as you get older, substantially older, hopefully the physical thing will grow out of that trust more naturally, okay? Okay, okay. Tiffany, take care. And we'll be back after this. We's back. On Loveline, the show that helps. Sometimes it hurts. I've gotten some tough calls the last segment. A lot of serious stuff. I felt bad ridiculing them, i got to be honest with you. Let me give the phone number out. <laughs> hey, Mike. Turn Drew's mic on. Am I on here? There we go. Much better. All right. I moved. I moved, Mike. All right. You I guys, did move. You guys done with your ch your idle chatter? Because I'm going to give the phone numbers out. 1-800-LOVE-191. 1-800-568-3191. Or you can fax us at 310-854-4455. And, uh, Drew, why don't we talk to Jason? Jason, what's up? You're on Loveline. Adam and Dr. Drew, what's up? Jason. How you doing? Good. Good. Um, my question is about sexual intercourse with my girlfriend. Um, sometimes it seems like she has more of a release. It happens maybe once every other time. And it's almost like um, it's almost like a urination or something. What it, is that? It could be a urination. You mean you mean during during orgasm? Right. It could be a urination. There, there is something called female orgasmic incontinence. But sometimes women just have a lot of uh, glandular release. Okay. A lot of fluid is released, and uh, it's it's okay. Let me tell you something about the female anatomy, Jason. Oh, good. Oh. All right. There's Go ahead. all kinds of stuff going on all down right. there that you couldn't even begin to scratch the surface of. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It's very complicated. You're going to tell me, right? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> no, actually, I wasn't going to tell you. I don't no, understand myself. There's no way he's going to tell you. Let me tell you something about the penis. Very simple. Uh -huh. It's just, it, there it is, with a hole at the end, and there you go. Cool. That's anyway, it. Adam, um, I have one more question, if I can ask that. Um, is it possible to have, like, more than, like, one orgasm for her in a minute? More more yes. than one in a minute? It is? Yes. Women, women don't have really a refractory, some women don't have much of a refractory phase, and they can have just repeated climax. Refractory phase means downtime. Downtime. That, that's your TV time. That's your, yeah, whatever. That's my victory lap time. <laughs> That's the time I put the towel on. Yeah, I go into the bathroom for a little pose you don't down. Drape a flag over you or anything? <laughs> yes, yes. Like like when the U.S. won the hockey right. in 1980, right. I just skate around crying with the American flag draped over me, and then I fall to both knees and I look up at the heavens and I, <laughs> yeah, you look for your dad in the stands or anything. That's right, and I wave to him. You know what I'm saying, Jason? Uh, See, while we do that. They're ready to go. That's, lost, that, that's, okay. that's the beauty of being a woman. Men, no downtime. No, some some have a, a, a downtime that's similar to men, but men always have a big, pretty good substantial downtime, and the downtime gets longer and more and more depth to it as you get older. It's, right. It sort of parallels the clock analogy we were talking about the earlier. The sundial tonight. with the penis. Right. When, right. when it's at noon, you're like 14, and then it goes out. At, right. right. Okay. Refractory may be, you know, at noon, right. the refractiveness may be 10 minutes. At uh, 345, it might be Right. So like when, you, when you're 40s, it's like three days. Right. Also gives you plenty of time to call your buddies and tell them about your conquest. All right, Jason. Okay. Cool. Good luck to you, son We're of a gun. Our callers off. Well, he was saying cool. That's right. Big deal. What's he going to do? Kill himself because he didn't pronounce an L? 
Jeff, what's going on? Hey, Drew. Hey, Adam. Hey. hey. Um, I had a question, kind of, I don't know when, what the last question was, but uh, it might have something to do with that. I, I'm 19 now, and uh, I know that that's about the age when guys hit their, like, sexual peak. Right. Um, I was just wondering, like, if that has any physical... Um, Manifestations? Yeah. Hair starts falling out, guts start slopping over your shorts, your uh, testicles oh. begin dragging on the ground. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's well, after the peak, Adam. That's not as you achieve the peak. He's wondering, at the peak, is there some way he's going to know that he's Oh, it's there? after the peak. Yeah, All I was right. going to say, you talk a lot about golf <laughs> at a certain phase. Well, uh, more, more along the lines of, uh, like, actual... You, you're wondering, if, you're wondering is, there, is there any sort of physical attribute anything you could look right. at and say, gee, I'm at my peak now? You have a and boner then, all the time. Yeah, you could I, be like at a funeral and you'd start, you'd start feeling something press against your slacks. Well, about, what about if it's not all the time? Like it's pretty hard to get it up and stuff. Are you, do you have any medical problems? Um, none. Do you have any medications? No. Well, some people don't hit their peak. You know, not everyone peaks out at the same time. Thank and, God. And not everybody is as preoccupied as, say, Adam. Right. <laughs> and uh, seriously, and so some people, you know, the, the the press and shows like this give them the idea that something they're supposed to be preoccupied with all the time, and some people are just not that way. Yeah. And the, is it possible for, uh, like, say, the genitalia, so to speak, to shrink? At your, at, in general or at your peak? You mean as you get older? Well, either one, in Are, general or at the peak. Well, I'll tell you what happens is your your testicles get bigger. Yeah, but if you smoke... Well, and it makes your penis okay, not, look smaller. There are drugs and... and, and uh, but if you've taken an actual ruler out and say it went from seven to six inches. Your penis? Yes. Mm, that's hard to understand. And in what period of time? Uh, over a couple of months. A couple you, months? Are, are you, I kill myself. Are you, uh, do you have normal, what we call secondary sexual hair distribution? This sort of, do you have hair in the normal places, this yeah. kind of thing? And you, you're otherwise function normally? Yes. Hard to understand. I, I definitely would see your doctor to make sure there's nothing going on physically, but it doesn't, doesn't strike of anything that... Uh, I, I know what the problem is. Jeff? Yes. The ruler has a standard size, meaning inches, <laughs> and it has a metric si side, uh, too. Uh, you must have had it flipped over. Oh, I hate when that happens. Because <laughs> he's looking at the metric side, which is in millimeters, going, geez, I'm 247 inches. Amazing. All right, Jeff, good luck. Hope right. the penis uh, <laughs> holds the course. Uh, Angela, what's going on? Um, I have a question about um, birth control. Um, about Okay. My husband doesn't like to wear a condom, and I just had a baby, and I'm breastfeeding. And he says that he heard from another doctor that they said that birth, um, breastfeeding is a form of birth control. It is a form of birth control if you're, like, out in the, in the bush somewhere, in the wilderness. Uh, that, that's what sort of prevents women from becoming Mike, pregnant. Mike, uh, Drew said bush. Could you cart that up, please? Thank you. Come Go on, ahead. Come on, guys. Go ahead. Uh, it, it, it does it cause certain hormone to be released that decreases your uh, potential for ovulation, and the cycling doesn't necessarily reestablish itself. Plus, uh, the guy sees you over there with the little one latched uh, onto the uh, bosom and kind of goes, I don't know. See, guys don't like uh, to look at their women in a biological way. They like to look at it in a sort of, you know, Charlie commercial kind of way. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of guys see... No, I don't know what you mean. Here's You're what I'm saying. To I'm going to explain myself. Yeah. A lot of guys see the normal process, nature, the, the natural process. And that, that grosses them out. That's not good. Yes, the breastfeeding... The uh, you know when a woman gets pregnant, giving birth, and the most stuff. beautiful part of the of the female the most experience beautiful is, part is of the female experience can be revolting to a lot I of see, men. I see. It's akin to they look at the woman's crotch as kind of the fun center, like the amusement, like an arcade, a penny arcade in Anne's case, but an arcade. And the point is, it's like being a Chuck E. Cheese and opening the door, and all of a sudden you're in the kitchen, and there's some guy named Hector mopping up, and it smells funny, and it turns him right off. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Still don't. Uh, Angela, the fact is that it is a means of birth control, but it's not a terribly effective means, okay? Okay. So don't, if you really don't want to have another child, uh, you can't really rely on that, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good luck. I let's make, let, let's make a habit of cutting each and every caller off as they say farewell. <laughs> well, what am I, a pro? I want to apologize to producer Ann for my penny arcade. She's giving she me a look it. like I'm going to Oh, she didn't? Oh, no, well, she didn't screw, hear it. Screw it then. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Drew, you want to pick a call? Uh, let's do this one. This is Marty. Marty, you're on Love Line. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Get off the freaking speakerphone. Okay, hold on a second, man. My uh, car looks up. I'm going to 
Let's see if I can get it back to work. Great. Hello. There you go. Hey, Marty. Long time listener, first time caller. Good. Right. You got, got they love the show. Thanks. Thank you. you got one of those horrible uh, cordless phones? Sure do. Yeah, you know on the on the picture of the box, it shows it shows the guy with the phone like strolling down to the mailbox, then going up to the like 7-Eleven to buy a six pack and stuff. Yeah. And I get 4 feet from the stupid antenna and the thing's breaking up. I'm hearing like some kind of ham radio. Oh, I got to have the two antennas touching otherwise I can't hear you. Oh jeez, I know. It's no bigger scam in the world than those godforsaken cordless phones. They show the guy out on the raft floating in the pool, the guy going on vacation, bringing the phone with him. All right, Marty, I'm glad we've exposed that. Now, what's your problem? Uh, I was wondering if Dr. Drew can tell me the actual process of what an addict has to go through for recovery. For yourself? Yeah. Well, it, it, I'm not sure I understand exactly what you're asking. It, it really depends, I think, if, if I get what you're asking me, to a large extent on how severe someone's disease is. I mean, much of the early part of the of the treatment is just getting some people medically over the hump and detoxed. Okay, after that, uh, there is really an attempt to sort of deal with in a what we call a multidisciplinary manner all the stressors, interpersonal problems, psychological problems, psychiatric problems that an individual has. All right, I'm going to put then, this in wait, English. Wait, and then I, now, you're sure. confusing everyone. And then Drew. connect that person. And then, Adam. and then connect that person and teach them about the 12 step recovery process. Uh-huh. All right. Did you understand that Japanese? Not, not a no. Word. Of course you didn't, Marty. No, no, but no, I'm Dr. Drew, no, no. He's a brilliant right over the head. He's a brilliant guy, but I understand yeah. him. I'm going to act as the the go between, the li- liaison between Marty and Drew, interpreter. Uh-huh. Interpreter. What Drew's saying is, first thing you do is you cure the medical problem. Right. You get them off. Right. Of the substance, right. you get them, get them so then, they can think again, and so they can not think again. You get, the yeah, you get them to stop shooting up or right. dropping or right. whatever it is they're doing. Then the next step is you go check out why they're doing it no, from a no, psychological no, 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 no. standpoint. In fact, in fact, oh, true, you're making no, me look like a no, big no. ass that, now. That's that's one of the fallacies is that addicts do it because they're addicts, but there are things contributing to the intensity which they use, the drive to go back to it. They're, 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 well, that's a psychological. Yeah, I yeah mean, but it's not why they use. It's, it's the factors that affect the evolution of the disease. They use because they're right, an addict. But let me give you an example. You get them off the heroin, right. and then you find out they were like, I don't know, molested right, or right, something, and right. then you address that problem, correct, correct. the Others, psychological yes, yes, yes. aspect. Well, then why are you saying no, because no? Because that's, that's not why they use. The other people that are not addicts who are sexually molested do not become addicts. Addicts become addicts because they're addicts. Yeah, well, you're very right. passive aggressive, Drew. I'm not. I'm very directly aggressive. <laughs> Marty. Marty. Yes. You need, it's a long process. That's why it takes so damn long? Because it's very, it's very involved, and uh, it, it works. Uh, it, you know, if you're if you're mild, mildly on in the disease, and you don't have a lot of psychiatric, psychological problems, you're physically okay. Just go to meetings. Do, All right. Do the basics. Get a sponsor, and you'll understand very quickly what the process is. Okay. All right, Marty. What's the definition of an addict, real quick? Uh, my definition is somebody who has a family history, parent or grandparents, uh, ongoing use, progressive use and preoccupation in the face of adverse consequences, usually relationships, financial, legal, health, or a work or school. And then the third is some degree of denial about uh, either that you're an addict or that the consequences are related to the use or the most common kind of denial is uh, what's required to stop. Most people are, these days are able to identify as an addict, but then say, well, I'm just going to stop using that substance. It won't be a problem. Well, guess what? If you're an addict, that's the very fact that if you could just stop it, if I just had to convince you you had to stop, there would not be addiction. All right, now you've got to stop. I'm done. Because right. we got to go to commercials. We'll be back with more Loveline after this. This is Loveline, and that's the lovely Joan Osborne who's nominated for a whole bunch of crap, and we won't get into that right now, but we will get into the phone numbers, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. That same number translated numerically would be 1-800-568-3191. I am Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew, board-certified physician and uh, all-around hell of a guy. Fax number 310-854-4455. And let's talk to Betsy. Betsy, what's going on? You're on Loveline. Hi, Adam. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hey, hey. Betsy. Betsy. I'm glad to talk to you. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm My boyfriend and I like do a lot of stuff and everything like that, and I was interested. He won't give me oral sex, and I was interested in finding out a way to like convince him to. Does he have a favorite food? <laughs> 
No. <laughs> no, because you, you know yeah. this is getting weird already. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, I won't get into that then. Uh, he, yeah, actually, why... fish is his favorite food. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, Betsy, you got a worse sense of humor than I do. Okay. Be- Betsy, listen, has he ever given you oral sex? No. No? What's up with that? Well, he said that he said he had a girlfriend who he gave it to one time, and she said that she didn't like it and that it hurt. And I was like, I don't know what's wrong with her, but... All right, let me say this to all moronic men who are listening. First off, never use old girlfriends as sexual examples. Never mention old girlfriends, period. Never, yeah, I mean, you can once in a while when you say something like, you're a lot, you're a lot prettier than my old girlfriend, or <clears throat> my old girlfriend's breasts were real small and her butt was real wide, so you're a welcome change. You, you can say that sort of you, you, it, bad example kind of stuff. But never use that like, yeah, one time I had sex with my old girlfriend for like four hours and I got like a rug burn and so I'm just kind of scared to do it in the living room. Don't, don't say that. No one needs to hear that. I, is this guy around? No, no, no. What do you mean he's not? Where is he? He's not here. He's working. He's working? Where's he working? He's working on schoolwork. He's working on schoolwork. Mm-hmm. This guy has to study you. This guy has to quit cracking the book and start looking at your... I would have to agree. Yeah, we got to call this guy, Betsy. <laughs> Betsy, do you understand that? Yeah. I can solve this with one phone call. Well, how can I convince him? Well, you don't need to convince him. I'm going to convince him, okay? We're going to get his phone number. We're going to call this guy. We're going to straighten his crap out. Until then, we're going to talk to Marin. Marin, what's going on? Hi, guys. Hey, Marin. Um, I have a, I have two questions. I was wondering if, by finger banging yourself, if you can get like some disease or get bacteria up in there, or you can get a urinary tract infection. You can. You can force bacteria up into your bladder. Yeah, it depends what you were what you were handling before, right? No. Like if you work no. at like a no. like a petting zoo or something, yeah. and then you go home and and handle yourself that way no. without scrubbing up. It's not that so much. Just there, there's bacteria that live in the perineal area. Normally, you can force up where it doesn't belong. You mean w- they, women? Women can do that. Yeah. How many times have I said that? How long have you been on this show, Adam? And the, the, the urethra is very short, and it's very short distance. All right, we always get. All right, we know about the short urethra. Uh-huh. All right, so wait a minute. You're saying. There's bacteria down there that live around like the right. outskirts. Right. Like let's let's say if you're in Los Angeles, the bacteria would, might live in like San Diego, no, or more like Glendale. Oh, oh, like Glendale. Yeah. Okay. So then, <laughs> this huge finger goes from Glendale and shoves it right down into like around like a, a Hoover Street or right, something. Right. Easily just pushes it across the hill there. Right. And then and then what they. Then a bacteria get in a place where it doesn't belong. And then they like, take a job in the garment district or something like that? Now I'm confused by my own examples, Marin. All right, so it can't happen, right, right, Drew? it can happen. So what do you suggest? They just You're careful. That's all. Just, what do you mean you get, careful? You get pain when you urinate after something like that. You get call a doctor make sure you get antibiotics. What's your, Last year? No, this, yeah, the, the most recent one. Right. Do you remember her? I have no idea. She had like um, no, all right. No, we still, were the- still don't remember, but uh, happy masturbating. Thank you and mahalo. Do we have? Oh, Betsy, Betsy hung, hung up. up. Uh, see, she backed off. Well, a lot of people say they want their questions answered, but when it really comes down to it, true, they're scared of confrontation. But yeah, not right, us. Right, right, not us. Well, well, they're sort of afraid of you being the confronter, I think, is what the thing is. I think I've proven myself as a, a silky-throated pitch man. <laughs> what is it again? The crown royal? <laughs> the crown royal sack over right. the tongue with the velvet. Great. All right, all right. Samantha, what's going on? Um, hi. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, Samantha. Um, the only... It's so hard for me. The only sexual experiences I've ever had right. were... Um, not of my consent, I guess. Right. How old were you? Uh, from the age of the four to seven. Okay. And I'm only sixteen now. Yeah. And I, ever since then, I'm not like I can't get near a guy. Sure. Like, I'd have to walk away. Right. Or something. Of course. And I'm wondering, is that going to like keep with me for like, is, the rest of my life? It is going to affect you unless you do something to correct it. Who Who was this guy? Your you know, well, family it, member? Well, no, it was my mom's friend's kids. How old were they? They were ten and thirteen. I'm not See, sure. See, guys, oh, that's, you, no, that is the, that's bad. No, no, no. The, I mean, it's it's not as bad. The the, the no, <laughs> it's, 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 no, it's bad, but it's not like your dad I, bad. No, it's not like your dad bad, but it's bad. And I'll tell you that uh, I've got a friend who has a pediatric practice where really she just deals with this problem, where she deals with survivors of sexual abuse, and she has said in the last five years her practice has become completely filled with young people who were sexually abused by other children. Mm-hmm. 
adult abuse a child, let's say, that child doesn't perceive the normal boundaries and then goes out and abuses other children. So this is a, so you know your, your kids are playing out in the dollhouse out there. You might you got to watch because you don't never know what, what another child may have experienced. And it's not they're not bad kids. They just don't know and they act this stuff out and it creates more traumatized kids that do the same thing. Samantha, you got you, it's going to affect your ability to have intimacy the rest of your life unless you have some very. There's very, another thing when I was around 11 or something i told a guy friend of mine he was the first guy friend that i ever had and he later raped me yeah the, well, but you're great but see you got to stand something i keep interrupting you but the fact is no i'm not i'm just pissed off yeah, well, i mean not at you but but the, but the fact is with somebody that has been a a victim somehow i don't know how this is but people that are victimizers can find those people sense who they are and perpetrate another victimization, mm -hmm. and you being a victim are used to to, to uh, being in that role and don't know how to not be a victim. Quite That's literally, what I'm scared of like later. I'm going to search for this or something. Well, it, it, it's not that you seek it out; it's more that they seek you out. But you will seek out bad things. Uh, yeah, I mean that that is the uh, crappy circle of life. <laughs> I mean, it really is. The more crap you got handed to you, the more crap you got shoveled onto your plate when you were young. The more crap the you more bring on. Crap! It just keeps coming like some kind of bad buffet. Yeah. And 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 conversely, when a lot of good stuff happens right. early, a lot of good stuff happens later. Right. These parents but, piss me off, man. Well, it's it's not just these parents; as our society as a whole has forgotten, they're forsaken. Our kids and even even kids. Samantha, Samantha's sixteen. Where are your parents? Now? Do they know about this? No, I know. Yeah, they they need to know. They need I to can't know. tell them. They need to know. It's not, you know, the the sad thing is, is that Samantha feels ashamed and somewhat responsible. Yeah. In uh, in, in some way for this, I'm not saying she is, but I'm saying she some, isn't. Somewhere, obviously not, but somewhere in her psyche, right. she feels somewhat responsible for this, and that's stopping her from getting the help that she needs. You need help, Samantha. Please go get it. It can be it can be greatly improved. It needn't be with you your whole life, but if you don't make some changes, if you don't learn what's how this has affected you it can certainly affect you the rest of your life it's not your fault samantha don't be scared all right okay thank all right you. all right good luck i hate that heavy line tonight Yeesh. yeah no kidding well it's sunday night you know everyone hates sunday night why because i gotta go to school or work on monday mm. you know what i'm saying yeah it, see for me i hated i hated mondays even 10 years after i was out of school because i got used to hating mondays so much I, I when I was kinda, in school. I used to get kind of depressed on Sunday night. You're Did right. you get that? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we're going to kick it up with uh, Lauren. Lauren, what's going on? Hey, I need some advice. Yeah. I was, um, I started a job, and there were these two guys there. I found them totally attractive. And this one guy that I really liked, he was really sweet to me and everything, asked me out. Mm hmm And we went out twice. Meanwhile... The other guy, who is his best friend, was flirting with me and all this stuff. And so his friend and I went out. We went out twice. And then he didn't ask me out again, and I really liked him. And um, I was a virgin. And um, the other guy, his friend, um, kind of sweet-talked me, and we ended up sleeping together. Ooh. And I lost my virginity to him. Ooh. So, well, how did he sweet-talk you? What did he say? I need um, it now? <laughs> no, he kept talking to me about the other guy, saying, "I know just what he wants." You know, it's it, it's not right. I love that him. rap. I love when guys go. Let me tell you what pigs men are, baby. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me just lock the door here for a second. <clears throat> now, let me tell you what pigs men are. I mean, I was attracted to him, but I hadn't had sex before, so I was just like. Okay, I'll I'll have sex with them. I wow. I kind of was attracted to him. All right, Lauren, what's hey, your I, question? I have more of the story. Yeah, I know you got enough for 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 five shows, but we got to okay. go to commercial soon. So get to it. Okay, well, it's been a long time now, and I don't work with them anymore. But I'm still sleeping with um, the guy that I lost my virginity to. Oh, jeez, maybe we had to talk to her after the commercials. All right, all right, much going on. Here. Yeah, Lauren, we're going to put you on hold. Okay. And we're going to sort out this whole mess, all right? And we'll be back right after this. Oh, it's a Sunday night. I'm having a good time. I hope you are, too. This is Loveline. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. You can figure it out. 
The fax number, 310-854-4455. And we're going to go back to what makes this show great. And you know what that is, Drew? Your voice. <laughs> yes, I'm going on a 20-minute diatribe great. about uh, uh, the aerospace industry. No, we're not. We're going back to the phones. We're going to talk to David. David, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Good. You're a bastard. Thank you. Anyways, Drew. You're an insightful man. Question for you, Drew. Mm -hmm. um, every time I ejaculate, I get this horrible burning cessation. It happens actually about five out of ten times. Where, where is, is it, does it burn? It's a, the tip of my, you know. Uh, my how, about when you, how about when you urinate? Um, yeah, that's what it is. When I go for that after piss. That's what that's what it hurts. How about when you urinate the rest of the day? No, no problem. Only after I, uh, yeah. What happens if you wait a while before you urinate? Um, uh, same thing. Burn. You still get. Some what burn. happens if you urinate? But it's like well, I, it's like I have to take this raging piss this whole the whole time. Right. And I have to sit on the pot pot and let my <laughs> let my wang dangle. You know. Right, right, right. But so um, you have to do you have to do it the girly way, right, David? Yes, yes. Something. There's is, nothing wrong with that if you're comfortable with your sexuality. Yeah. yeah, but th this is not something he should have to tolerate. There's something causing irritation of the urethra, the tube out of which you pee. Whether or not there's something infectious in the prostate or, uh, I, you know, I, I'm not really clear what's going on. Almost, almost any infectious process in that area can cause these kinds of symptoms, though typically it's associated with frequent urination and pain when you urinate every time, not just after you ejaculate. So you need to see a doctor, get some cultures done, get some swabs on this sort of thing, and uh, it needs to be checked swabs out. Swabs right. means they put a Q-tip up there That's and right. uh, dangle it around until you're better. All right, we'll be back in 10 seconds. All right, we got more Loveline and we got more Lauren. Now, if you remember, Lauren called uh, about 10 minutes ago and uh, she wanted to, uh, what did she want? <laughs> she had this long story about two guys, and one guy she didn't like she sleeping with. Oh, yeah, guy. yeah. It was a boring story. Lauren, what's going on? I just wanted advice about it because I don't know what to do. Right. You're still sleeping with you're sleeping with the guy who divergenized you. Right. Because but, because the other guy, um, the guy that I slept with, he told his best friend kind of to rub it in his face. And um, now that guy won't talk to me. He has a new girlfriend now, let, but let me I tell care you, about him so much I don't know how to, like, convince him that if we did get together, he could trust me. All right. Huh. Let me tell you something about the nature of man very quickly. Do not blame him for telling his best friend. Man cannot, cannot help that. You know what I mean? If a guy has sex, he's going to work it into the conversation the following day, no matter who. He's, he could be talking to a priest at a funeral, and he'd, be, he'd work it in. I know, and now he tells him every time. Every time. Very nice. Well, that, that, that may be a little excessive. All right, so l let me just see if I understand everything. You had sex with the guy who you're not nuts about, and you're continuing to have sex with the guy you're not nuts about. Meanwhile, the other guy you worked with who you like, you haven't had sex with, he's moved on to a new girlfriend, and he's hearing it from the guy you are having sex with who's rubbing it in his face. Right. All right, this is doomed. I'm sorry to say, what, Laura. What, what can I do, though? Is there anything uh, the, I can do? The only thing, the only first step I could see her taking would be to leave the country. No, leave that first relationship, to end, terminate the relationship with the first guy. Let the second guy know that you're available, and then maybe you can communicate your feelings to yeah, him. It would but take a lot of time. This guy's going to torment her his entire the entire relationship because yeah. his friend. No, not the other guy. And you know what? He even told me he doesn't blame me for it because he knows how his friend is. <clears throat> and I, I guess I was just kind of naive, but I mean, I've taken responsibility for it, and I apologize for it because I didn't. Lauren, he has another girlfriend. He has another relationship. I know. Okay, that's the bottom line. And as far as he's concerned, you're in a relationship. At the very least, if you want him to think you're sincere, you should terminate the relationship you're in. It may or may not be enough. Okay. Right. All right, but it's a good start. Good advice, Drew. Very sound advice. And now we're going to talk to Brandy. Brandy. Dr. Drew. Hi. How are you? Good. Cool. Um, I have a couple questions, actually. All right. Give us the hard ones last. <laughs> well, actually, it all ties in together. Um, when I was 21 years old, I had two abortions, and they were probably about, I don't know, four or six months apart, if well, that. Did you have any complications associated with that? Um, not really. All right. Um, it was, I didn't really have any problems. Did you hear? I'm going to emphasize something I said earlier in the show. I, I pointed out some literature that was published. Maybe it's not even out yet. It was like I got a pre-release of this literature that suggests that women that have a therapeutic abortions are at slightly higher risk 
of breast cancer than than uh, the average. What, what's a therapeutic and, abortion? Abortion, and not, not a spontaneous abortion like a miscarriage. Oh, oh I see. And uh, uh, again, for women that are out there worrying, should I be on the birth control pill or not? Pregnancy and abortion carry higher risk than I can see any risk associated with the oral contraceptive see, pill. See, it's another one of those weird, uh, the Lord works in mysterious ways kinds of kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. I mean, not that I, uh, I'm, I'm as big an atheist as they come, but you screw around with nature. Mm -hmm. You get pregnant, and then mm -hmm. you, you suck the thing out and all that kind of stuff before it goes to term. And somehow it, your nature figures out a way to pay you back. Yeah, yeah. Well, and my other question is, see, I'm also diabetic. I'm an uh -huh. independent diabetic. How long have you been diabetic? Um, almost nine years. Okay. And I'm also recovering. From alcohol? From, from addiction, yeah. Alcohol? Drugs and alcohol. Okay, and what's your question? Um, I had a miscarriage when I was 18, and that's... Shortly after that, I found out I was diabetic. Right. And then when I was 21, I had both abortions. And I guess what one of my other questions is um, regarding my capabilities of having children due to um, everything, you know, due to the fact that I've had a miscarriage before, I've had two abortions, and I'm diabetic. Uh Probably the abortions at this point are not going to make a big difference. Do you have any any history of sexually transmitted disease or anything like that? Um, no. Because really those sorts of things add to the risk of infertility probably certainly more than the, the uh, abortions. Chlamydia is probably the largest factor in infertility in this country. How do they check? I mean, how could they tell if a woman went in to a gynecologist and said, am I going to be able to carry a baby to term? How, what would they do? I don't think they could. Is there some kind of thumping process no, that goes no thumping, on like a no. melon? No thumping. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't even so much that. It was just um, contributing factors as to the difficulty of, of carrying a, a pregnancy to term. Well, understand that, that is your, are you a brittle diabetic? Are you able to control the diabetes pretty easily? It's under control, yeah. That when you're pregnant, it will become less easy to control it. And right. that if you were able to maintain very tight control of your blood sugar during pregnancy, you should be able to have a normal pregnancy on the basis of that. Right, that yeah, you should exactly. be able to be... If we know you're able to conceive, and you should still be able to conceive, provided that your tubes are still functioning. You should be able to become pregnant, and I don't see how the abortions are necessarily going to affect your fertility. So all told, you should be okay. Obviously, it, you know you've, you've sort of been beaten up physically, and you're, you're probably not constitutionally what a normal 27-year-old would be. But no, no, I mean that. that but but there but there's no medical problem there that's going to prevent you from doing any of this. Okay. Right. All right. I had one more question yeah. to you regarding. Um, like the emotional stability as far as um, guilt, shame, remorse associated with um, making that kind of a, of a crucial decision. What, to have abortions? Yeah. You mean you feeling guilty about your decision to have one? Well, I was in denial about it Brandy, for a really long time. I was spot inventory with your sponsor. Well, I've done that. Do it again. Um, and I was in therapy for a while, and then my therapist moved, so that, <laughs> that kind of posed I, I, you a know, problem. You know, there... Women and our society at large do not really acknowledge the, the gravity, the impact that it has on women. Oh, just go along with my gravity. No, just, just, <laughs> gravity. For Christ's sake, going, you're, you're, if I use, if you sorry, if like, I said impact, you'd said gravity. No. Admit it. Admit it. All right, I'd say gravity, um, but but it, it has biologic and emotional impacts that 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 go that carry women carry with them for a long time, and it, it really is quite impactful. Doesn't and it's not. Away. I mean, you deal with it. I probably, I would expect that having children would sort of help you resolve some of this. It sounds yeah. like you're heading in that direction. I do. You yeah. have yourself a little bouncing uh, baby boy or girl, and you also uh, realize it all better. You also until they hit their teens, and you go nuts and try to kill them. Well, you also they try to kill you. You also <laughs> but realize, you get them first. That's what I'm saying, Drew. You also realize that what it would have been like to try to raise a child in whatever your condition was when you were 21, it would have been terrible. Right. I, 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 not to say that I am actually anti-abortion. I would have encouraged somebody to give up for adoption, things like. Right. That. But even that, you know, these are tremendously impactful. Right. The kid life. probably wouldn't have stood a chance and would have uh, gone on to resent you, much like I resent my folks. Thanks, Branny. All right. Let's talk to Alicia. Alicia. Yes. What's doing? Hi, guys. Hey. Um, I have a question regarding anal sex. Good. Actually, it's not really a question. It's just I, I wanted to know what your thoughts were. I'm being. If you don't mind, I'm going to get some coffee, all right? <laughs> Go ahead, Drew. All right, thanks. And he, yeah. I'm, I'm being asked to... It's to, going to be as long as you're going to hold on a second. At least, uh, Drew is not kidding. He's actually going and get, getting coffee. You're a real pro, Drew. <laughs> Jackass. So is, he, is that like a sore subject for him or something? Yeah, he's very sore in the record. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's back. He's back with his tail between his legs. You oh, know, maybe he, I made him mad. He knows he's done wrong. But, Alicia, go ahead. I I'm am sure the uh, butt love expert here. <laughs> 
Well, no, I, I, I heard it. It's, it's very painful. Oh, yeah. And is it, is it worth his satisfaction? Every penny. No. <laughs> Are you, aren't you glad I came no, back? Yes. Yeah. That was the voice of reason. Oh, okay. Is it worth his satisfaction for your pain? Right. Slash humiliation. Right. Which is half of it. Right. Believe me. Guys are doing this. Let me Why is that such a fantasy? Let me right? tell you. Let me tell you how guys work, Alicia. I'm going to clue you in, and I'm going to clue in the rest of the women that are listening. And guys are going to put a freaking mafia contract out on me when they hear me, because when I divulge these kind of secrets. But it's true. Let me tell you something about guys that are in a butt love. Now we're going to get all sorts of calls of people going, hey, Adam, he's wrong, or Adam, he's spilling the beans. But let me tell you, I love women, and that's why I'm going to. That's why I'm going to let you in on it. They say it feels good. They say it's tighter and it's, it's more arousing. But really what the guys are into is the whole humiliation factor. Really? Let me tell you, guys like to be in control. And there's no more time that you're in control than when your penis is in someone else's butt. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, that is the no, ultimate. I don't. They can't you you can't argue with someone whose penis is in your butt. You know what I mean? It's like any question the answer is yes because my penis is in your butt. I would actually like to go over to the management and put my penis in their butt when we're trying to work out our next contract. So for his ego's sake, I should do it. <laughs> Drew's on the floor now. I don't know if he's vomiting. I, we got to get a crash car in here for Drew. He's lying in a puddle of his own urine. Does it really, really have anything to do with pleasure? or? Is no, it's got nothing to do with pleasure. It's Look, an ego trip. Yeah, of course it's an ego trip. <laughs> you think it feels good to put your penis in someone's butt? No. <laughs> <laughs> That was Drew. No, it doesn't feel... I mean, it's tight, but but no, it does not. With all this stuff running around there, are you kidding? If you had to put your penis somewhere, would it be in someone's butt? I mean, if it was just on the feel-good scale? No, it's because when my penis is in your butt, you'll do as I say! Because my penis is in your butt. If you guys could go shopping, if, if there was like some kind of cart that guys could use at the market that had a special cutout or something, they would do that. Because it'd be like, I want the Swanson's Hungry Man. Well, I want the Lean Cuisine. Ho! I think we're going for the Hungry Man. Well, now that, I, now that we've already gone to the store and gotten all that, that's another question, actually. If, if, if it were to happen... Which I don't know now, and he's probably going to kill me. <laughs> he's going to kill me first. I can guarantee you that. But but we got okay. We got KY jelly. Is that what is is that what you need, or is that bad? Or yeah, no, it's good. It, yeah, because the KY is water soluble. Oh, I see. That's you, what you, I was concerned about. Yeah, you don't you don't want to use like uh, petroleum based jelly because right. you'll be buried with that stuff still in you. Okay. Yeah. It will never go away. I mean, that's the stuff you use to grease uh, axles and eighteen wheelers. That right. stuff not going to go any, away. Yeah, I don't want any like. Can I can I like uh, <laughs> intrude here on this lovely? Yes, conversation? that's a that's a lovely choice of words, Drew. Now, go ahead and intrude. Now that now that I, you've had me come back and sit through this. <laughs> was that the penis over that, there? Yeah, there? Put him on. It. Put him on. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Alicia, make sure at least that he wears a condom. And then again, oh, the water soluble uh, uh, lubricants are essential. What's his name? Uh, Mike. Put put Mike figures. Honey. Put Mike on. Don't call him honey. He's trying to humiliate you. Hold on. Drew. No, no, not no. Drew. This no, is no. Adam. Drew's wishing he had gone to the coffee machine as he had planned. <laughs> Mike. Mike, am I right? Did you hear no. a word I said? You're blowing my whole fantasy. I certainly am. I'm never going to get two women. The only thing I have left to fantasize about is her butt. Yeah, I know. It's like the last frontier. <laughs> <laughs> Go where only no man has never gone before. So you think. <laughs> So she's told you. That's another thing, too. Guy gets a woman. Guy wants to do stuff that hasn't been done to them before. And sometimes you really got to look around. I mean, you got to be like Lewis and Clark to figure out what hasn't been done to a woman that you've gotten to, especially as you get a little older. When you get to be my age, I'm 31, I start going out with someone who's 28, 29, or 30. Oh, Believe yeah. me, they've had everything done to them twice. And I have to sit there and scratch my head with, with, uh, with, with a mechanical pencil on the drawing board to figure out what hasn't been done to them sexually. Anna's giving me a look like, what planet are you from? I can, we can't hear you, Ant. Hey, Mike, would you give it the program? <laughs> and what's, Who do you go out with that has had everything done to them twice? Everybody I go out with has had have have everything. Porno actresses? No, just like regular women from the valley. <laughs> Where are you finding them? 
I find. Yeah, exactly. He wants one. Yeah, I mean, what, what? You know, you want one of these? <laughs> no, believe me. It, 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 no, you don't. You don't. You know, I, I don't. You got to help me out, man. You can't talk her out of that. All right. Listen, if she doesn't sound like she's objecting to it too much, all right? Yeah. All right. So what you need to do wear is condom. wear a condom, use all the lube, and uh, take it nice and slow. Oh, yeah. All right. And get her some flowers afterward. All right, Mike? <laughs> She'll get more than that. Maybe a box of chocolates. Good man. Don't, don't, don't put it in her butt, though, all right? <laughs> you got uh, it. All right. Take care. That was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to apologize for saying it, Drew. Martin. You. What's going on? I just wanted to understand you correctly. You think that it's all about humiliation? Uh, not necessarily. Humi humiliation slash control slash uh, I'm going to be the guy who does this to you first slash who's the boss. You know what I'm saying? You don't think it has anything to do with the... Uh... Uh, well, I think Sam Kinnison said it best when he related to the uh, the Adam the whole Adam and Eve thing, you know, where they had all the fruit in the whole garden of Eden to take, but God said, "Don't take from this tree." That's right. And that's how women are. They say you could have this, meaning the mouth, and you could have that, meaning the vagina. But right. You don't touch that. Right. Stay stay away. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That. Well. That. That's what I'm saying. It, 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 isn't that what I'm saying, Drew? <laughs> Drew is nodding. Drew is just absolutely disgusted over here. But it's true. Yeah, that's 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 what it is. It's taboo. Okay. You tell a guy not if women were smart, they'd start telling guys not to mow the lawn instead of not to have butt love with them. They'd get the lawn mowed and they'd save their <laughs> their tuchus. God bless you, Drew. You okay? Mm. I'm gonna let you pick a call, Drew. Oh, we have such a such a selection here. Yeah, we certainly do. All right, let's do this, Sean. Hey, what's up? Good. What's up? Okay, my girlfriend, okay, she had her period two weeks ago. Right. And now she's complaining of bleeding again. I just wanted to know um, 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 if she might have something or what's up. How old is she? She's 14. My that's girl. what you call spotting, right, Drew? No, at 14, that's what you call normal. Because normal? it takes quite a while. First of all, some women are always very irregular. But at 12, 13, 14, most women are irregular. Oh, well, she's taking this this pill and I was just wondering what what pill should take or something and that can mess with her pill too it mess with her period too is okay. that for your skin probably for her or, or it's it's a good antibacterial good antibiotic oh so Sean nothing wrong with her all right okay perfectly normal okay thanks wow Drew you uh, you cut right to the you know, thick I just, I just I I I'm just so pleased and proud and I uh, you don't, know, I can don't walk hand me that crap holding you love my the, head up high you love the butt love talk as much as the next sicko Bob oh hey guys what's up Hey, what's up, Bob? Hey, I was wondering how to impress this girl in my class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it? Do you have any suggestions? Just a just a general thing? Yeah, I like, I like her and stuff. Yeah. And uh, all right, let me let me tell you a common mistake, Bob. Are you listening? Yeah. Because, you know, I think I hurt I hurt men's causes with the whole butt love diatribe, but now I'm going to I'm going to help men. Women don't like it when guys strut around like a peacock. Do you know what I'm saying, Bob? Yeah. See, guys have this mindset of, I got to impress this woman, so I got to get myself a really bad nugget gold watch or some, you know, crappy, uh, crappy Italian horn jewelry or some puka shells or some crap like that. And women look at that and they go, he's a dick. That's what women do. What women are impressed by is the little things. And can you hear me? Do you want to come in on this one? Am I right? They like the subtle things. Like what? How would you impress them? Well, they don't woman? want it. Like, like I'll, give you, I'll give you for instance. Uh -huh. Women will look at a guy and see how he treats other people and, and factor that in pretty good. You know what I mean? Like if, a little, like if there's a little kid around and the guy goes down on one knee and says, hey, sport, and throws sure. the ball to him a right. few times. The kid's all into that. Right. Men could care less. Women could take a... Can take an oar upside a kid's head, just as long as they got big boobs, the guy's in. But but women, uh -huh. women are impressed by the way guys handle handle other people, treat other people. Especially children. Right. We love that. And, and your family members. Yes. Right. And, 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 like and, but children, we love to see men with children. Right. And when they say stuff like, I'm going over to visit my grandparents this weekend, even if your grandparents are dead. Oh, that's even better. Oh, better. That's so much <laughs> Go, better. Going to the cemetery. cemetery. Hopefully when your grandparents has passed on and you say, I have to visit my grand," And they say, 
where does she live? And you go, uh, Forest Lawn. And they go, but that's a cemetery. And you go, yeah, she passed some years ago, but I like to just sit up there by the stone and reflect. I drop flowers off every Sunday, even if it's a total That'd load a of crap. a little eerie, actually. A little eerie? Yeah. Well, I'm not saying you're talking to them, like swapping recipes or anything, but you go up there. You, it gives you a chance to think. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You love that. You're getting hot now, aren't you, Anne? No, not really. I'm going to go to the graveyard after this. <laughs> you want to go? Go pick up a kid first. <laughs> oh. All right. Hey, baby, come on now. She shouldn't kid about those things. Bob. Yeah? It's the little things. A woman wants to observe you and you're, you know, doing your they thing. I want to see him honestly being himself, being vulnerable, being emotionally open, that kind of stuff. Bob, That's what you're saying. You're, Bob, you're talking about you, the images of that. I, I'll tell you, Bob, can you fake crying? Um, uh, I'll, I'll try. What? Can you break down in front of her? Uh, I wouldn't want to. Okay, all right. Well, let, you're, you're right. Let's not overdo it. You think you're gay, all right? Oh, all right. Here's the deal. Get in your own crap. Be cool. Take care of your own business. And don't go and flaunt it in front of her. And we'll be back. Love line. Tomorrow night we got Mike Muir. You may remember him from Suicidal Tendencies. He's now with a group called Psycho Myco, and he's going to come in here, probably peddling something, but we'll have a good time with him. The phone number is one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. The faxes come at us at three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. Faxes like the one Drew is holding in his left hand right now. Got a couple of them. Two, one of them is a nice fax. It's from a previous caller. It says, uh, my 10th anniversary, my wife and I decided to get a divorce. I really didn't want the divorce, but had given up after years of fighting. I stumbled onto your show on our local radio station. He's calling from Boulder, Colorado, and decided to give you a call. It says, uh, whatever, and then you gave me some advice, Tried to give it, decided to give it another try. I did. I compromised. I tried to communicate more uh, honestly. It seems to be working. Things are better. He lost his job. He wants to get another one. It says, I'm going to make things work out. I want to stay married. I love my wife and kids and my lifestyle. Just thought you wanted to hear about one of your successes. And I actually think I remember this guy because uh, he, he really was not thinking. He was thinking so much about himself and where he was at. And I remember us giving him, trying to get him to refocus on his kids and his family, his commitments, and he kind of got it during the conversation. He, you know and, what? You know what's bizarre, though. You know what's funny is when we hear a story like this, nobody more surprised than us. <laughs> that's that's the sad part. I'm like, really? These guys stuck together? Holy crap! It is kind of it is kind of funny that we should be so flabbergasted by that. But I'm not flabbergasted. You're not? No, I'm amazed. You're flapped, not just flabbergasted. You're like you're like addled. Hey, listen, here's here's a more uh, uh, down to earth facts for you. Please settle the earwax issue. Is it better to clean out earwax with a Q-tip or just leave it in the ear? Never put anything in your ear smaller than your elbow, is the old saying. Do not put Q-tips in the ear. If you look at the package insert, it says not to put it in your ear. It's the leading cause of ruptured eardrums in this country. All you do is pack the earwax back in against the eardrum. Oh, you do? I'm so I'm so excited because I picked up a Q-tip five minutes before the show started, and I pick up a Q-tip once every millennium, and I shoved it into my ear right before this. Yeah. See, you have something. God, to be that like, is weird. What, what I'm uh, surprised at is that you're more excited about that than this call. This uh, fax from Colorado. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who are we going to talk to? Oh, we're going to talk to uh, Christy. Christy. Hi. Hey. Okay, Doctor Drew, I have this question for you. Christy. Okay, I recently started seeing a guy. He's ten years older than me, mm. and he's divorced and from his past marriage. He has a child. She's four years old, and we've been spending a lot of time together. I've met his family, his, do his daughter, the whole thing. Well, this past time I didn't get to see her when she came over to visit him, and she asked where, where her mommy was. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, your mommy's back home. And she goes, no, my other mommy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he said that she goes, you mean Vernetta? Or, or, and she's, or whatever your real name is. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> anyway, so she's, um, she was asking about me. Right. And I, I love his daughter. I think she's great, but... I don't want her to, if something happens between us, right. her to, you know, get the wrong thing or have it affect her. It, it will. It will. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're already in. It's, al it's already uh, too late to be thinking that way. I mean, it, it, it's normal for a four-year-old to be looking for that kind of a relationship with the women they like and who they idealize and who are being close with their father. I mean, it's a completely normal kind of an of a, a attraction for them to get. 
because uh, her and, um her parents have never since I mean they were divorced when she was a year like a half a year old she was only like six months old when they were divorced so right. she never really got to see them as a family right. Don't, uh, Vernetta mm-hmm. if you don't think she misses that think again I'm sure she does and she's looking for that and the, you're maybe sort of her wish come true there you're fulfilling that and then you're going to leave too perhaps and you know, this is tough for I mean, kids I don't plan on it but you know I'm... look it's tough for kids <laughs> well you know, my, my parents were divorced when I was pretty young right and uh both my parents dated a bunch of weirdos. I mean, my dad had like, a, I hope he's not listening, but he, he really, had, he, I'll tell you the funniest thing. Let, bear with me here. I'm going to tell you something funny. My dad became single in like 1977. Yeah. And my dad is a big nerd, you know, and he, he would wear like bad sport coats with the, with the patch on the sleeve and the whole nine yards. When he turned single, he turned into John Travolta overnight. He went out and dropped like five grand on platform shoes and oh, bell bottoms. Oh, my God. My dad wore clear glasses. No prescription, just the clear ones. This guy, he looked like a pimp all of a sudden because he was out, you know, he was out cruising. Yes. And dad all of a sudden, yeah, he turned into Denny Terrio overnight. And he went out. He had a pair of jeans that like laced up in the front oh and laced God. up in the back. Oh my- <laughs> I love seeing pictures of him from that day. And he was out, like, trying to score with every 19-year-old chick in town. And he'd bring them back. And I, I was, like, I was nine and I knew better. I was, like, I was nine and I was going, Dad, these chicks are too young for me. What are you thinking about? And my mom got involved with all these weird pot-smoking guys. And, like, what the hell a guy named Zorback? Who, wrote, who, like, lived in a van. Down by the river. Down by the river. <laughs> what the hell were they thinking? No wonder I'm so warped. I have a stepdad, and he's the greatest thing. He's more of a dad than my real father is. Yeah, but can you imagine how if, if you had developed a relationship with him and then he left? Yeah, but his name's not yeah. Zorback, and he doesn't live in a VW <laughs> in a van. But, Adam, do you remember having any kind of uh, attachment, say, with any of the women that... Uh, not Zorback. No, your, the ones your dad dated. Yeah, there was actually, there were a couple okay. that were okay. Okay, and how did it affect you when they disappeared again, just the way mom did? Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know if it had a, it didn't have a, I was like, I was numb by that point, but right. I don't know, I don't know if it had a huge effect, but he would go, always go find another one pretty right. quick. And so it, you know, it wasn't a lot I mean, of you, down you period. It's sort of profound what you're saying though. You're already emotionally numbed out. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure this little girl is. I mean, she, uh, she's no, she's four. young. Yeah. She's, she's, only she's only four. Yeah. All right. So what, what do you think? Let her call your mom and, and, and treat her like a queen for as long as it lasts. I, I would say, I think you'd be surprised at how much a four year old can understand. I mean, should I and, make it like a definite line saying, you know, I'm not your mommy? I, just have, well, don't have breastfeed her or anything. Have, <laughs> have discussions with her about what the nature of the relationship is in that family and how much you care about her, how much you value her, and really support that. But try to show her where the boundaries are, okay? And and just give her good good taste in her mouth about women and the the whole mom thing. You know you know you know what I mean? All right. Okay, thanks a lot. You, you sound good. All right. All right, she's good. She'll do a good job with that. Unlike Zorback did with me. No <laughs> wonder I'm so screwed up. Uh, Melinda. Hi. Geez, you've been on hold for a long time. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. <laughs> That's okay. What do you want to know? Um, about a month ago. Before school got out, college got out, I was at a party kind of to celebrate school being over, and I got really plastered. Mm -hmm. And I think I might have had sex with a guy at the party, but nobody who was at the party will talk to me. They are all really mad at me, and I live in the same apartment building as all of these people, and I'm going to have to see this guy in a couple days. And I'm really not sure. So you've narrowed it down to one guy. Yes. Is it was is he like a maintenance man or is he a a, a kid at the school? No, he's a friend of mine. Oh, he's a friend of yours. Yes. Hmm. I know this is going to sound bizarre, but have you thought about asking him? Yes, I have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ask him. Ask him. What? Oh, you haven't asked him? No, I haven't. All right. I'll tell you what. If you don't want to ask him, I'll tell you what we can do. Uh huh. We could call him. That's what we could do. <laughs> He's still out of town. He, yeah, sure he is. And your name's Melinda. Yes. He's he's out of town. He's out of town still. We're, we don't know where he is. I, we'll call him. We got I, I know where he is. I just don't have his. You don't have his phone. phone number. All right, all right. Here's what you can do: if he's out of town, break into his dorm room, go to the hamper, steal a gym sh- sock or something else that has like a semen sample on it, take it 
to the, do you have some sort of forensics lab that you could use? Uh, does the school have some, some sort of chemistry department or something? Where are you going with this? <laughs> I'm just you like, don't even I'm know where you're down. going. I do, I'm going to stop you. No, listen. You take the sock, you take it down to the chemistry lab at the school, you run it through something, you take like a little DNA thing, you, you isolate his sperm, and... <laughs> Where was I going? <laughs> yeah, I have forget. no idea where I'm going. Yeah, forget. Call the guy and ask him. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll if do he's that. He's your friend. Let him be your friend, okay? First. Okay. Yeah, but yell at him for having sex with you while you're loaded, and then look in the mirror and yell at yourself for letting him have sex with you while you're loaded or getting loaded in the first place. <sighs> Eddie. Yeah, hi. Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, nothing. Um, I just called to find out if my relationship relationship problems are as like messed up as like I think they are. I'm sure they're screwed up. Not as bad as my mom's and Zorbak's relationship, <laughs> yeah. though. I'm sure. Yeah. How old were you when Zorbak came around? Um, <laughs> How, Eddie's going to answer for me. I was like like nine. Describe Zorbak. Zorbak, uh, six eleven. No, I, I, he was taller than hell. Yeah, well, like what? he shaved his head and like um, put a little uh, he, mohawk on it and he, he, five thousand uh, earrings and. Yeah, no, no, no. This, Zor- is, long this, time ago. this is like 1974, so, oh, okay. so he looked like one of the Almond Brothers. You know, he was like <laughs> sandals, size 17 Birkenstock sandals. You know, uh, straight, ripped, shoulder ripped up hair. jeans. Wearing like back then, guys used to have like a purse or something. You know, guys would have like a leather purse. You know, and a big beard, and he's traveling around. Uh, you know, the, basically making things to smoke pot out of was was what Zorback did for a living. Eddie, it couldn't be as bad as that. What's going on? Oh well. well. Uh, over the summer, I uh, went out with this girl. Her name is Allison. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, she's older. And this is my really first serious relationship. And, well, you know, I was going out four months. Great relationship. Then, like, for the last three months, it was the last three weeks, it was, like, really bad. And we broke up and everything. And she dumped me for another guy. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, she, uh, then uh, she was going out with that guy, and I was, like, uh, sitting, like not going out with anybody. And, yeah. Um, then I started going out with this girl named Sasha. Which I found out she had, she had a crush on me for the whole summer. Right, Eddie, where are we going here? What's, what's actually the question? Well, okay, yeah, the what question is the question? Is, the question is, uh, I'm First off, the guy does more dating than I do, and he's 13, which is a little pathetic, but go ahead. Okay, uh, well, um, let's see. Uh, I'm just wondering if my, my ex-girlfriend wants me back, That's from what I've heard, from her mom. <laughs> uh, and um, she, I think she's trying to... Uh, Give my my new my girlfriend right now a bad rap by saying that you know she was cheating on me and stuff like that. Do you want your old girlfriend back? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> we 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 walked thirty miles in the desert to tell him you don't want your old girlfriend back. Don't take her back. Jesus, Jennifer. Yeah. Hi. What's doing? Um, I have a question for Doctor Drew. Yeah, Jennifer. Um, when I was twenty-two, I got pregnant and I later gave him up for adoption when he was uh, three weeks old and um, wow I mean just wild that you had three weeks with the child and then were able to give it up I wanted to keep him and I thought I could and I just um, got overwhelmed yeah, well, I, I was I was only twenty two. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, <laughs> uh, but of course, I mean, but uh, nonetheless, what a courageous thing to do. I mean, you 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 dedicated nine months plus three weeks to, of your life to save another person. So, I mean, that's wonderful. Oh. And, you, and it's very tough, I'm sure, but it, how courageous to have done that. I think you should be proud of that. No, I mean, no, 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 no. God, damn you guys. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't say anything what? without being. What? Backhanded go, in some way. go, Reverend Drew. Go no, ahead. I, I, you know, um, Jennifer, go ahead. I, I have no doubt that I did the right thing for him. I, I was out of school. I could barely pay, you know, my rent, much less take care See? of an infant. Come on. What, she, still, what? she still did it. I'm I, saying she. I, I would have asked, told her to get an abortion. I so know you would have. That That's right. That you That's would've. right. But the point is she dedicated herself to save this kid's life. Now, I, I, it's, I, I, I think I would have felt more guilty that if I did have an abortion. Well, I, it's, I don't know. it's interesting how, how much the guilt and ill feeling abortions do create. But well, do, you, do you keep in touch with the child now? No. Do you no. have any idea about but the It parent? was a private adoption. Um, my aunt worked in a hospital, knew of a family, and da-da-da-da-da. Good, good parents. So I, you, you didn't sell them, did great. you? Jennifer, that's great. What's going on now? Because that um, stuff happens. I'm now in my first relationship since then. I mean, I'm just able now to trust men again. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I should tell him or not. We've been dating for about three months, and you know, it's been pretty serious. I met his family, and um, I mean, I don't want to go past the stage where it's 
become this deep, dark secret, but yet I don't want to overwhelm him mm-hmm. in a new, you know, I don't mm-hmm. know when to tell him. I don't think there ever will be a right time. Mm. And uh, should I? Do I even need to? I mean... Uh, what, what stage are you guys at in terms of, uh, you know, divulging that your past and talking about your past and things we, that are heavy and important to you? I met a couple of his ex-girlfriends just because he works with them. I mean, are you seeing each other every day? Are you living together yeah. already? Yeah, no, I won't never live yeah. with another guy yeah. again. Yeah, um, yeah good. <laughs> you end up with Zorbach. <laughs> Jennifer. Je- Jennifer, I think you ought to begin to move towards telling him this is a major event in your life. It's important to you. It's it's actually a, a, a reasonable test of how supportive a person he is and how much he's going to be able to empathize with you and you, your, the things that are important to you. Uh, you need to tell him it's an important thing. I think if he does care about you. I, I don't you, think it's going to weird a guy out. N- if he's committed and if he really loves her, it's not going to make any difference at all. He's going to be so completely right. there for All him. right. So, Jennifer, here's your answer. Catch 22. If he's weirded out, you didn't need him anyway. And we'll be back. Weez Facts. We got some more love lines. The phone number here, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. You can fax us at 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. And you are... Whoops. Oh, the wrong caller. Oh, sorry about that. We'll put you on hold. Whoops. Come on, Drew. There you go. Be a pro. Tom. Yes. What's doing? Well, I'm working, actually. You believe that? Yeah, I believe it. Where do you work? <laughs> well, right now I'm working in the office, but it's, it's homework. Okay. Hey, uh, Fascinating. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you know how to do it. Hey, um, a comment on the guy that called up earlier talking about whenever he urinated that uh, it, it was painful. Right. Uh, it, it brought back some painful memories myself. Uh, this is back in high school, about 10 years ago, when I was dating this girl, and I was sneaking through her window quite a bit. And um, ended up to where I was urinating, and it was painful. I mean, painful. I mean, I waited for the day to go. Tom, yeah, but that's not that's not what he was talking about, Tom. That's urethritis, what you're describing. Tom, they let, they let you drink at work? <laughs> <laughs> Do they let me drink at work? No. But, Tom, that's urethritis, and that's that's not what he was describing. He said just and only the first urination after ejaculation. Tom? Really? Tom, though, I like I like the way uh, Tom tells the story. Tom goes, yeah, hey, man, in high school, I was a girl. I was sneaking through the window back and forth, and all of a sudden my penis started burning when I was urinating. Yeah, this is what happened. I ended up thinking uh, it was, it was, I was naive. I had no idea. So I went down to the health department found, and told her about it, and I said, hey, what kind of disease you got? And uh, she goes, what? She thought I was out cheating on her. So we both walked down over to the health department, and she got checked out, and a week later I gave the doctor a call, and he says, you've been using it too much. I was saying, what? He says, you've been using it too much. And I go, I never heard of this story like that. He says, yeah, you strained it. He says, you well, need to lay off. Well, so I, I don't know what that word she told me earlier. Now, did he say st- strained or sprained? <laughs> strained. Those are basically the same word in, in medical lingo. But it, it is. That's not the problem. It's not the problem. He, he, but that isn't the same word that you're. That you're, 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 you're describing something different than he is. And what you had was urethritis. You had inflammation of the urethra for whatever cause. And it sounds like something was traumatizing it, and that's what caused it. Yeah, you know, it wasn't her. It was, it was dragging on the windowsill every time it climbed <laughs> in and out of that stupid window. <sighs> Sarah, what's doing? Hey. Hey. Um. Okay. The thing is, is I'm engaged. Mm-hmm. But I'm still thinking about a friend of mine oh, you b- way back when, and I can't seem to th- stop thinking about him. How far back when? Um, well, him and I were friends for like... Friends? Yeah. Better friends. clarify that, that term. What do you mean friends? Well, we were friends. We were friends for seven, six years, then I fell for him, and then he told me he was gay a year later. It, so he knew he was gay when you fell for him? I, I don't know. Did did you guys go out for a year? We were really good friends. We hung out a lot for a year. All right, listen. Did he ever penetrate you? No. 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 You never had sex? No. And he told you he was gay? After a year. Mm-hmm. How but, long but I don't understand. Like, a, a, oh, after a year of friendship? He was gay. I found out he was gay. They were friends for six years, and then they kind of were boyfriend girlfriend, but they weren't no. having sex. Yeah. Adam, people can be boyfriend well, girlfriend without having sex. I was, just, I was astounded. I couldn't figure it out. You, wait a minute. 
<laughs> Hold on. Hold the phone. You mean Zorback and my mom may not have actually... No, I, I don't believe that for a second. Uh, Sarah, you mean you went out with him for a year and you, like, kissed and stuff? No. Well, occasionally, but... Were you boyfriend and girlfriend with this guy? No. We were... All right, that's what I thought. You have no idea how to tell a story. And Drosy, you're wrong. People can't go out for a year without having sex. Total vindication. Sarah, you said you're friends with this guy for six years. Mm -hmm. Then you said you started liking him, and a year later he told you he was gay. Yeah. No, he, she found out he was gay. She found out he was gay. Exactly. A year after what? You started liking him, right? Yeah, a year after I fell for him, yes. All right, but big deal. He never fell for you. Well... Now you're still thinking about a guy you never actually had that kind of relationship with? Yeah. What wow. Do you, what do you think that's about? Me? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you, you have no idea? We were just really close friends. No, no, forget about him. What's going on now that makes you preoccupied with that? I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know. How psyched mm -hmm. are you to get married? Oh, she's revving a go. <laughs> huh? Excuse me? Why are you getting married? Um, pregnant. I couldn't tell you. Pregnant. What's going on? Why are you getting married? I just w I really want to. I think oh, no, wait a minute. No, she, she, this guy wants to stay in the country. That's why she's getting married. Why are you getting married? How no, can you go from I can't tell you to... I'm sick of dating. That's why I want to get married. That's not a good reason to get married, okay? Yeah, so you can be miserable for a few years, then go through divorce court, and, and then, then go back to the crappy dating world, this time even more bitter and more confused. Yeah, but why should I go back to a dating world where everybody ends up being gay? Ah, <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, that's great logic. I love the way people react uh, psychologically. Like, like, like they'll go into. I have, swear to God, I had a friend who would not go into supermarkets because she went in there one time and got felt up by a produce manager, and that was it. She can't go into supermarkets now. No, like she's got like an eighty percent chance of getting felt up by Joe Car Carchoni, the green grocer, when she goes into the supermarket. Oh, yeah. What kind of sick that's, logic that's, is that? That's phobia. That's a that's that's a biological reaction. You get traumatized. You just get fixated on that, and you, you can't overcome it. You know, Sarah, let me tell you, my sister worked at a hair salon in a gay neighborhood out here in Los Angeles in Silver Lake. And one time we were sitting around the dinner table. This is about five years ago. And we the, the topic of what percentage of men in society were gay came up, and we were all venturing guesses, you know, and, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's 8% or 10% or, uh, or whatever. She goes, um... Mm, I'm like, I don't know, 70%. I'm like, what are you, nuts? And she's like, oh, well, uh, yeah, it's about 70%. Because every guy she worked with was gay. So she, like, deducted 30%. Right, she was right, being right. generous. Right. But the point is, it's just because you have your own little weird world doesn't mean that's the way it is. Right. Just because this guy turned gay on you doesn't mean that every guy you're going to date is going to turn gay. There's a lot going on here, Sarah. I don't know, I don't know why that traumatized you so much. Don't, don't know, get married. Yeah, I don't know why you're running away in a marriage that you can't even tell me why you're interested in being married. Yeah. Uh, I, it just doesn't sound like a good situation. I think your preoccupation is either due to, I, this is a guess, this is not a clinical opinion, that She's it's, a due, it's due Satan? to the, the intensity of the trauma that, that that all created for you in the first place, and you've been preoccupied ever since. Or before that, before or the fact that. that you just yeah, well, but it triggered something. Oh, oh I see. Okay, I wasn't or, or, listening. Or you, that's right. Or <laughs> that you really don't want to get married. And this is just a way to keep your mind occupied with a spurious issue rather than really addressing what's what's truly bothering spurious you. Spurious is like a BS issue. And Drew, you know, when I when I'm honest with you, don't yeah. chastise me that way. When were you honest? I, I missed it. I said I wasn't listening, and you went, "That's right." <laughs> right. All right, forget it. I'll just clamp up like a clam. All right, you're going to be happy. No. Matt, are you happy? Yes, I am. Good. What's going I'm so on? Glad we finally picked you up. Thank you. Where are you? I'm in uh, Baltimore, Washington area on WHSS. Fantastic. Best radio station in America. Yeah, it's awesome. The festivals, all that. Yeah, rocks. Well, I have a question for the doc and your experience tonight. Yes. I saw this picture of a woman that could tie her clitoris in a knot. Yes. And I was wondering. What, what, you say that as though you've seen it. Yeah. yeah I've yeah. actually seen it. No, no, as though Adam has seen it. No. no I, I, she can tie her clitoris in a knot. And I was wondering, yay! is this possible? And how long is the average woman's clitoris? Well, now, but let, let, let's work this out. Now, is it a regular knot? Is it a slip knot or a sheep shank? Matt's, Matt's Over, confused. Through, you know. I don't think that's... Is that right, Drew? 
There are certain disorders, uh, endocrinologic disorders, certain medication, anabolic steroids, these kinds of things that can cause something called clitoromegaly, which is a which is a <laughs> I dated her, which is a growth of the clitoris, so it becomes like a small penis. Really, and like women on steroids and stuff, who are bodybuilders, they get that. Is there anything called like a penomegaly, where it makes a small penis like a large penis? Certain kind of mirrors will do that. <laughs> like when you go to the fun house? Right. I'll do that. I'll run through with my pants down just for that thrill. Well, Matt, there you go. It's uh, an actual... It's possible. D- it's possible. Cool. Good. I, I hope we've uh, cleared things normal. up in your life. Now Matt can go on and live his life accordingly. <laughs> what does he need to know this for? I don't know. Ann do is I, over there. Why do I need to answer it? Ann what? is... What's the Ann looks like a grouper. What's the matter? No, that's just so weird sounding. It is weird. It's not normal. It's a, it's a medical anomaly. It's not something that makes people happy. You know, if, if you ever read articles about women that were bodybuilders and things, they'll, they'll talk about that sometimes. Really? Yeah, yeah. Not in Long, the, like three or four inches? It just hangs like no, that? No, not like that, but, but, you know, a couple inches, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. wild. Jeez, I'd be happy with that. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, no. Would you really? He means you? on himself. He means on himself, and not... No, I mean on myself. Yeah, come on, Ann. We'll give the program over. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, and and thinks I got some kind of clitoris fetish going on. Lucas, I have a question. Um, I've been dating for a couple of years now, and um, every girl I've ever dated ends up screaming me in the end, like screaming me over. They either have sex with someone else behind my back, or they, you know, mess around with someone else, or they feel that the relationship wasn't working and. I try to be the best boyfriend I can be, you know, do everything right, you know, buy them flowers, do every, anything I can do to make them feel better. And I was just wondering if, if there's anything I'm doing wrong or should I change my style in dating or I don't know what to no, do. No, keep going. Stay the course. Stay the course. God love you. You're getting sodomized by every woman you're going out with. And you want to know if you should change your style? Of course you should change your style. You're finding the wrong women. Mm, that and or maybe not being... Uh... Assertive enough. Well, I don't know like, where to look for the right women. When, when you go on a date with somebody, how do you conduct the date? How do I conduct no, it? No, no. Get in Lucas, the car, bitch. Lucas, Lucas oh, how, how do you so. conduct the date? Okay. Um, well, the, if we went to the movies, you know, I'll take them to the movies. I'll, I'll pay for everything, you know. How do you decide which movie if to see? If it's going, you know, right. I'll how do you decide which movie to see? What movie? Yeah. I, I don't know. Usually a scary movie works because then they... Good. They latch it's not, on to you. Yeah. Like, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Lucas, you're 16. Yeah. Don't worry. You get it all out of your system, and soon you're going to rise like the phoenix from the ashes of the tattered relationship, and one day you'll be on top, and then you'll get divorced, and she'll take you for half. Love line will be right back! just about does it, don't it, Drew? I think that does it. Another show of uh, sophistication, uh, intellectual uh, Drew, you were, you were laughing your ass off during that butt love part. I was on the floor because I couldn't believe that those words were going out on the radio and I would be associated with such a show. I love you. So. Play, he, he's such a prude, but let me tell you, he's a wild man off the air. Yeah, right. i uh, like to thank uh, producer Ann. She does a wonderful job. I'd like to thank the beautiful and talented Sherry phone screener and the petite and talented phone screener, Lori. I'd like to thank the man who is a uh, half nut short of a full sack, Engineer Mike, who does an incredible job. I'd like to give the address out over here at Loveline, P.O. Box 4345, Hollywood, California, 90078. And you can reach us on America Online at L-U-V-E-191. No, L-U-V-191. Oh, I'm sorry. L-U-V-191 at AOL.com. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. So that's it, then. The opinions expressed on Loveline by Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, or anyone are not necessarily ours. Be happy. Be happy. Happy, happy, happy. happy. The Lights producer is Ann Wilkins. Thank you.